Hi everybody, welcome back to another weekly craft video. My name is Tori and I'm your Makerspace Librarian. I'm here in the Whitewater Public Library's Makerspace and this week we have a really fun, exciting craft. Um, we are going to be doing embroidery. Embroidery is a great craft to get started with. It doesn't require a lot of supplies and the supplies that you do need are pretty cheap. As you can see, I've only just started my embroidery project. These take a while, but the nice thing about it is it's very easy to set down and come back to whenever it's convenient for you. So this is actually my first ever embroidery project. I learned how to do this craft as I figured out how I'm going to show you all how to do this craft. Um, so I'm an embroidery novice, but I'm going to show you how to do all the different stitches involved in these different kits that I have. But I'm also going to give you a few resources to do some additional research and find some additional help on your own. So we have some really cool crafting resources available through the Whitewater Public Library. So I struggled a little bit when I was filming this video. It was hard to hold my project and make sure that it was on screen and focused at the same time. So if you need a second run through of the if any of the stitches that I show today, um, obviously you can go to YouTube and just search the stitch. There's a lot of great videos there um, and it'll walk you through how to do the different stitches. But we do have this really cool resource available on the library's homepage. So if you go to whitewaterlibrary.org, you might need to click a few times through our little rotating display that we have in the center. But eventually you're gonna come um, to this little thumbnail here. It says creative bug. You can click directly on it and that's gonna bring you here. Um, the first thing you're gonna need to do is log in with your library card number and your PIN number. You do need those um, two things to access this via our website. If you don't know your PIN number, just give us a call at the library and we can help you out with that. So it'll bring you here and there are all kinds of different free crafting classes and activities available through Creative Bug. So when I was trying to teach myself about embroidery, I came here and I searched embroidery in the top search bar. And there are many different learning options available for you here. I think I, I looked at this botanical leaf embroidery one. Uh, where's the one that I really used? Da -da -da. Ah, this one here. So I used this embroidered florals um, class to help teach me several of the different stitches that I show in the video today. So if you're interested in learning more, if you want to try this project here, um, if you just need to see some of the stitches again, I recommend checking out Creative Bug. There's so many different things on here, not just embroidery. So I'm really excited to share this project with you. I hope you all enjoy it. Let's get started. Let's start by taking a look at what we are going to get in our craft kits this week. You're gonna get an embroidery hoop, this page with instructions, and a picture of your, your completed design. You're going to get a piece of fabric that already has the design printed on it. You're going to get a set of embroidery strings or embroidery floss and the floss is numbered by color so you know which colors to put in which part of your design which is really neat. And you're going to get a couple of embroidery needles. When you come to the library to pick up your craft kit, there's going to be three different patterns for you to choose from. So hopefully you get to choose the one that you like best. I'm going to use this pattern here to demonstrate. Once you learn how to do the stitches, 
you can use those stitches to complete the other patterns that are available for pickup this week. At home, you're going to want to grab a pair of sharp scissors and an iron. The projects have been folded, so the fabric has some deep creases. You'll want to iron that out before you get started. So the first thing that you want to do is iron your fabric so that it lays flat. Um, I know it doesn't really look like it, but I actually did iron this piece of fabric. Um, I didn't do a very good job, I guess. But that's all right because you're going to put it in the hoop and stretch out the fabric so any wrinkles should um, kind of pull out. I'm going to be using this blank piece of fabric that I traced a pattern onto. Um, this is a pattern that I printed for free off the internet and I taped the fabric to a window with a pattern behind it so that I could easily see the pattern and trace it. I used a special marker that we have here in the library's makerspace um, that is actually going to disappear if you put water on it. So you can use it to draw your pattern onto your fabric, do your embroidery, and then the ink will rinse out if you get it a little bit wet. So that's pretty cool. I have not tested it out yet, but the pattern claims that this printed ink will wash away with water as well. So once you're completely finished embroidering your project, you can get it a little bit wet and try to get off that ink so that it's not showing at all. All you see is your beautiful embroidery. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate how to put your pattern or your fabric into your hoop using this one right here. So you don't have to loosen it all the way, you just want to loosen it enough so that the two hoops come apart. Set that one aside. And now I'm going to place the inner hoop or the one that doesn't have the hardware on top underneath my pattern and I want to center it as much as I can. Once it looks pretty centered, I'm going to take the outer hoop and just put it down right over the pattern and the inner hoop, just like that. And I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit before I start to straighten out my pattern. Now the goal is you want this fabric to be really tight in the hoop. Um, so I'm going to gently start pulling, oops, that means I need to tighten this top part a little bit more. Now I'm going to gently start pulling on the fabric to help center my pattern and make sure that it's nice and tight in the hoop. Okay, so your fabric should be tight like a drum. It shouldn't shift around in your hoop. Once you're satisfied with the placement of your pattern and that your fabric is held nice and tight, you can take a pair of sharp scissors and trim in a circle, trim off the excess fabric around the edges, leaving about an inch and a half of fabric um, sticking out of your hoop. Let's take a closer look at the pattern. So if we look here at the top at this white daisy looking flower here, um, it's going to tell us a couple things. First it says zero 01. That zero 01 corresponds to a color 
um, of thread that came in your kit. So I can see here that one is kind of a white um, color of embroidery floss. So that's the one I'm gonna be using for this white daisy here. It's also telling me what kind of stitch I want to use, a satin stitch. And then if I look underneath it right there, it says two threads. Hmm. So I'm gonna be working with two threads. But when it says that, it's not talking about two whole pieces of embroidery floss. It's actually talking about the little strands that make up one piece of embroidery floss. So if I carefully start to pull apart the end of one of these pieces of embroidery floss, I find that each of them are made up of six strands. So when your fabric or when your pattern says two thread or three thread, it's actually talking about these little tiny strands that are making up your larger piece of embroidery floss. So once I identify a piece of thread that I want to start with, so I wanna start with this um, white color here, I'll remove one piece of thread from this little board and the first thing that I want to do is cut this piece in half. Now I have a piece of embroidery floss that's, I'm not even sure how long it is, 18, 20 inches or so, and that's going to be a good length for working with. If you use a length of thread that's longer than that, it can easily become tangled, easily bunch up at the back of your project, and that's just going to waste time and thread. So cut a shorter piece. And we're going to look at these little threads. So each piece of embroidery floss is made up of six strands. If I know that I need two strands for the first part of my project, I'm going to separate out two strands in one hand, the other four strands in the other hand, and begin to slowly, 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 so that it doesn't tangle or twist up pull apart my floss and if it gets tangled you kind of got to stop and untwist it and continue pulling until it's completely separated so we are ready to prepare our thread now so this is an embroidery needle it's different from a sewing needle because it has a larger opening there a larger eye um, so that it can accommodate different amounts of embroidery floss easily. So I'm just gonna thread it real quick. I like to do that by wrapping a bit of the floss around the end of the needle and pulling tight. And then I just push the little nub through the eye of the needle and pull it through. So we're not going to tie off this end, we're actually just going to work with the needle leaving this little strand of thread just kind of hanging off the edge of the needle. But on the opposite end we are going to tie a little knot. So I'm just going to tie a regular old knot and get it as close to the end of the thread as I can. like that, pull tight, and I'm gonna tie one more knot right over that little knot just to um, make sure that it's big enough so that it doesn't pull through my fabric. So we just have a double knot right there. And I always like to go ahead and trim off this little tail right now because it can kind of get in the way while you're working. So I'm just going to take a little pair of scissors and just trim it so that there's just a little knot with no tail hanging off. And now we are ready to start working. The first stitch that we're going to do is a satin stitch. 
I'm gonna use it to fill in the petals of this daisy. I've already filled in the center of the daisy with a French knot stitch. I'll show you that one next. Alrighty, so we are gonna start off with a satin stitch. I'm gonna try to come up as close to the center of this flower as I can. Sorry, I'm trying to work the embroidery and film at the same time, it's kind of difficult. You wanna come up at the center of one of the petals as close to the yellow center as possible. And pull through until your knot catches in the back of your fabric. So I'm gonna be working a satin stitch. So I like to start off in the center of um, whatever shape I'm working on, just doing a line of a satin stitch just right through the center of the shape that I'm working on. I'm gonna be working on each petal individually. And then I wanna come up next to the center of the flower again, right next to the other stitch that I just laid down. And I'm gonna pull up and pull it all the way through, just like that. And then I wanna lay it down right next to the last one so that there's no space in between. And I'm gonna to continue to do the same thing until this shape is completely filled in. Okay, let's take a quick look at that. So I filled in one half of this petal. The left side of it looks good. Um, so now I'm gonna come back and come up slightly on this other side here. Oop. Right there and fill in the other half of this petal. So I think that this petal is completed and now I'll move on to the next one, the one right next to it. And I'm just bringing it up in the center and putting it back down through the center on the next petal and just continuing working like that all the way around the flower. And that is a satin stitch. It's very simple, very easy, you just use straight um, stitches just fill in whatever shape you're working on. I don't know if you can really see this but sometimes you have to watch the back of your work because it can get sort of knotted and bunched up in the back. So if you can, if you notice it in time, you can kind of untangle the back of the thread and make sure that it's pulling cleanly through every single time. If it does get um, just too bunched up and knotted in the back, that's okay. Just, you know, cut it, tie it off, and start a new piece of thread. And if you ever make a mistake, like I just did here, you can try to use your needle to pick out the stitch, just like that. Once the embroidery floss gets short about this length, you're gonna wanna tie it off and start a new piece of thread. So I'll show you how I like to do that. I'm gonna thread this needle real quick. And how I like to do that is on the back of your work, take the needle and poke it under a piece of thread that's already secured to the back and start to pull it through, but don't pull it all the way through. You're gonna have a little loop that's still coming up from the back here and you wanna put your needle through that loop. 
before you pull tight. But I'm, I usually like to do that two times before I cut the tail of my thread. So all I do is feed my needle underneath some threads on the back of my work. And instead of pulling it all the way through, I just grab this loop right here so that it doesn't go all the way through. And then I put the needle back through that loop and then pull tight. And that creates a knot on the back of your work. And that allows you to trim it with a pair of scissors. So we've shown so far the satin stitch. I use the satin stitch here, here, and here. It's a good filler stitch um, just to fill in whatever shape you want to use it on. Next, we are going to look at the French knot stitch. There's some French knots on my work already right here, right here, right here, right here. It's used to fill um, the center of the flower patterns on this project. I'm going to fill the center of this flower here with French knot stitches. We're looking at this one here. We're going to use a French knot. We're going to use the color three and we're going to use three strands of thread to do this stitch. So I just come up through the back on the line and pull all the way through. So while holding the string taut in your left hand between your thumb and your forefinger, take the needle and using your left hand, wrap the thread around the needle once, twice, just like that. You need to be sure to hold the thread taut this entire time throughout the whole process. So we're gonna go back down through the fabric right next to where we came up, holding the thread taut still and push your needle through. Still holding the thread taut between your left hand, holding it taut as you pull it all the way through, just like that. And it creates that little knot that we see right there. So I'm going to go ahead and do French knots all the way around this circle and then fill in the inner circle with the rest of them. Holding the thread in my left hand and the needle in my right, I go one, two times around the needle and then right back down, holding the thread taut the entire time. And there's our second knot. Next we are going to look at the leaf stitch. I have an example of a leaf stitch that I already completed right here. So let's move on to the next one here and I'll show you how to work that one. The pattern is telling me to use my green thread and only use two strands of it. Alright, so I'm going to start off by coming up at the bottom center of my leaf. And I'm going to start by working my way up the left side of the leaf and then I'm going to work back down the right side. So I'm just going to start off by making a few really short um, satin stitches right here to start to fill in the bottom of this leaf. I 
know it's it's kind of hard to see, so just bear with me here. So once I've kind of gotten this little bottom portion filled in, I'm going to start um, coming up through this center line and going out to the edge of the flower. So I'm just going to continue using a stitch very similar to satin stitch coming up through the center of the leaf, the center line, and then working out and around and up towards the top of this leaf here. You can ignore the other lines in the leaf, just focus on um, coming up out of the center line. So I've worked my way up one side of the leaf. And now I'm going to switch to the other side. So I'm going to come up in the center. And finish working the top of this side. Just continuing on, coming up through the center of the leaf and down through the edge, just like that. So next we are going to try a back stitch. Now we are going to use a back stitch to create the stem of this piece of this branch with leaves on it. So as you can see here, um, I've already done a back stitch here to create the stem and then I filled in one leaf with a satin stitch. So this little branch right here is made up of satin stitch and back stitch to create the stem. So I'm just going to come up through the back of the fabric and pull all the way through and I'm going to move forward one stitch length. Now that can mean kind of whatever you want, however long you want your stitches here to be. I don't think it matters too much. Um, the only thing that matters is you want to keep your stitches about the same size. Just be consistent. So I've done one stitch just like that. Now I'm going to skip a stitch length and bring my needle back up, leaving a space between my last, I don't know if you can see it very well, between my last stitch and the next stitch that I'm going to make. So I've come up again through the fabric, but I left a space right there, about the same size as this first stitch. So now I'm going to bring my stitch back. So instead of moving forwards, I'm going to move it back to this other stitch and go down in the same um, where that last stitch ended. So I'm sorry, I don't know if you can see. Uh, so I moved one stitch forward with that one, came up a stitch length away, and then came back. That's why it's called back stitch, and went back down through the fabric there. So let's do it again. I'm going to come up through the fabric about a stitch length away from my last stitch. I know it's hard to see. So there's a space between the last stitch and where I just brought my thread up. And now I'm going to come back and go back down through the fabric 
right next to that other stitch. So there's just a line of green fabric going like that. Let's do it one more time. I'm going to come up about a stitch length away. So that there's a gap between this last green stitch and where my thread came up. And then I'm going to go back down right next to that one. So we're creating a line of stitches. Just like that. And I'm going to continue all the way until I finish stitching this branch. Next, we are going to take a look at the long short stitch. And it's sort of like it sounds. Don't look at this petal here. I think I messed this one up. Um, but this one does look a little bit better. So here in this petal, we are blending two different colors together. We're using a lighter peachier pink on the tip and a darker, more salmon colored pink um, in towards the center of the flower. So a long and short stitch um, is kind of how it sounds. It's like a satin stitch except for you use um, stitches of varying length so that you can sort of blend these two colors together. So I found this one really difficult when I was trying to learn it but I think I was making it more complicated than it needed to be. I think you can, you can be kind of messy and um, unorganized with this stitch because you want the two colors to blend together as um, seamlessly as possible so you don't wanna have an edge that is too straight. All right, so I'm starting to work on the next petal there. I'm coming up through the center of the petal um, next to these French knot stitches here. I'm gonna pull all the way through. And then I'm gonna go out about three quarters of the way and come back down. That way I'm leaving a little bit of room on the edge for the next color. So I'm gonna come back up near the center again, right next to that first stitch that I just made. And then I'm gonna come back down right next to it, but varying the length of the stitch a little bit to make it a bit shorter. So just continue on like that, working some longer stitches and some shorter stitches until you have this whole bottom portion of the petal filled in. So here is the first part of my long short stitch petal with the salmon color filled in there. Um, and then next I'm gonna go in with the peach color and just fill in the rest of the petal, matching up my stitches with where these stitches end. So as you can see here, I'm just coming up through the back of my fabric um, where these stitches end and filling out the rest of the petal in this new color. If you didn't want to mess around with the long and short stitch um, that goes with these flowers here, I don't see why you couldn't just fill in one flower with a satin stitch um, in one color and then the other flower with the satin stitch in the um, different pink color. Uh, it's totally up to you. It's your project. You can do it however you want. Next, we're gonna take a look at the Lazy Daisy stitch. This flower right here is made up of Lazy Daisy stitches, and I've already filled in the center of this flower with French knot stitch. I don't know if you can see very well, but there's one petal completed with Lazy Daisy stitch right there, and I'm gonna show you how you can complete your flower. You're gonna bring the needle up close to the center, Pull it all the way through. 
then you're going to go back down pretty much in the same spot you just came up through and pull a little bit but don't pull all the way through focus please so we're pulling it a little bit but not all the way through so that there's still a loop here just like that now we're going to bring the needle back up through the point of this rounded end of the petal right there if it will focus just like that through the point of the petal and we're going to bring the needle through the loop that we have there and pull tight and then you're going to go back I'm so sorry that it's so blurry and then you're going to go back down on the other side of the petal to help secure that stitch just like that the next stitch we're going to look at is called an outline stitch it's the one that I've used right here with the brown thread to create the stem for this plant. So I'll show you how to do it on this one here. So to sew the outline stitch, I'm going to come up through the back of my work, move forward about a stitch length, and rather than pulling all the way through, I'm going to leave a loop up this loop right there. So I'm going to leave a loop and come back up right through the center of that stitch I just made and now finish pulling through just like that. I'm going to move forward a stitch length and again we're not going to pull all the way through. I'm just going to leave a loop like that and come back up where this one ends and pull through just like that I'll show it again I'm going to move forward a stitch length start to pull through but don't pull it completely through and then come up at the end of this last stitch just like that so right at the end of that last stitch and pull through and that is the outline stitch so I have a few more stitches left to show you but these stitches are not used in this particular pattern so if you have one of the other patterns your your um, project may contain one of these stitches so I've been using a back stitch to outline the stem of these flowers here and now I'm going to use a straight stitch just to do these little branches here the ones that have the little dots or the little balls coming off of them so the straight stitch is very easy it's very straightforward um, you're just gonna come up through the back of your work and pull through just like that and then I'm gonna go to about right here where um, it starts to bend and just pull it through and that's it that's a straight stitch so let's do one more I'm gonna come up right next to this one pull through and then I'm just gonna finish this part off right here with one more straight stitch boom that's it and that is our completed straight stitch so I'm using the back stitch for the leaves and the main stem and then a straight stitch just to finish off these tiny little branches with these little um, circles on them so I've used a back stitch to create these stems here a straight stitch for these little parts that branch off a little French knot there to fill in the flower 
And here I'm going to show you how to make a multi-layer rose stitch. I've also heard it called a woven wheel stitch. For the multi-layer rose stitch, I'm going to be using a full strand of embroidery floss. I'm not separating the strands at all. So I'm going to work on this flower right here. I'm going to come up through the back of the fabric at any point around on the circle and I'm going to bring my needle back down through the center of the circle. Just do your best to find the center. So now what I want to do is I want to create sort of like a pie um, and split this circle up into five equal parts. So I'm going to come back up on another outer portion and go back down through the center again. So you want this circle split up into five equal parts. Mine's not exactly equal, but that's okay. You just want to do your best to, to have them all evenly spaced out. So right now my needle's at the back of my work, so I'm going to come back up as close to the center as possible without puncturing any of my threads. Okay. And now I'm going to, instead of using the pointed part of my needle, I'm going to turn it around and use the blunt part so that it doesn't catch on my fabric or my threads. And what I'm going to do is start weaving. Um, so it's important that we have an odd number of these little strings right here because we're going to weave over, under, over, under, over, under all of these strings and work around in the circle and it's going to create a really pretty rose shape. So I'm just going to start. I'm going to go over this first one here and under this one. Pull it through. Go over this one here, under this one over this one, under this one, and it's going to start alternating. So if you went over it last time, you're going to go under it the next time, and so on and so forth. So ideally you would continue working the rows until um, those little pink threads underneath were pretty well hidden, probably going around a few more times, but I ran out of string so I'm just going to show you how to finish it off. So then you would just take um, your needle with the rest of your string and kind of bury your needle underneath the edge of the rows and go back to the back of your work and pull through securing that last little bit of thread and tying it off in the back. Once you're finished embroidering the entire pattern on your design, you can remove the cloth from the hoop. Don't put the hoop in water, but remove the cloth from the hoop and place this cloth in clean water. Water is supposed to dissolve the black ink that's making up this embroidery pattern so that all you're left with is just your stitches. You won't see this black outline 
here. I haven't tested it yet, so I'm not sure how well it works. I hope it does. So after you soak your pattern in water to remove the ink, you can let it dry and then put it back in the hoop. And so at the completion of this video, this is all I have finished so far. I have a lot of work left to do. Um, these are a time investment. They are gonna take you a while, um, but that's part of the fun of it. Um, if you make mistakes, don't get too caught up. Either go back and pick out the stitches or just leave it. If this is your first embroidery project or your 15th, it doesn't matter. It's just fun to make and that is part of the homemade craft aspect of it. It's one of a kind. Thanks for watching everybody. If you do do this craft, please um, share a photo with us. Let us know what you think. We always appreciate your feedback.